Hi guys, it is an absolutely, and I mean spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet here on this early winter day in this undisclosed swampland. It is the eve of Christmas Eve. It is Wednesday December 23rd, 2020, heading up to the upper 70s where I am today, and I want to get my kayak out on that gorgeous river for the first time since I moved down here. Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, but before I dip my kayak in the water, I'm going to do what I do every day, and that's uh, dose you up with doom to ruin an otherwise beautiful day. So, <clears throat> I was actually at Best Buy, Best Buy last night, waiting for an hour and a half for them to bring me a giant flat screen TV uh, out to the parking lot. And uh, I, it's not for me, it's not my TV, it's, uh, I was, shall we say, I'm <clears throat> doing a favor for a neighbor, and uh, was sitting there totally appalled by what I was watching at Best Buy, just, just getting more and more depressed, watching the holiday shoppers pouring in and out, in and out of Best Buy with all of this planet-eating crap while I was waiting for the giant flat screen TV, which is the third TV uh, for a 624 square foot house. But anyway, so I was getting more and more depressed, so I could make an entire, I could write an entire book about, uh, about this story, about this uh, damn giant flat screen TV. But uh, that is another story for another day and probably another channel <clears throat> here on uh, somewhere on the internet. Um, so anyway, since it was Best Buy, you know, they said, well, you can just hang out online while you're waiting for us to bring you this planet eating TV. So I go on the mainstream media. And uh, this story from the Miami Herald just pops up in the middle of, you, you know, all of the Christmas cheer stories. Uh, and, and, and there's certain stories that just come across the mainstream media out of nowhere, written by, you know, I mean, read by probably 10 people on the planet. That just really hit home. You know, really hit home. One I read a couple of days ago about these Chinese logging companies, you know, just obliterating the very last old growth rosewood trees off the planet. But we don't have to go to uh, Zambezi or wherever that was to get depressed. We just have to go to the uh, Gulf of Mexico, which is about 30 miles from where I am sitting right now. I could probably find examples of this very story to uh, spread some holiday cheer here on Collapse Chronicle. So take it away, Miami Herald, and it give us a dose of reality here in the holiday season. <clears throat> A painful skin disease is killing dolphins worldwide. Yep, from 30 miles from me all the way to Australia. Okay. <clears throat> Take it away. Ever since Hurricane Katrina devastated the Gulf Coast in 2005 with its Category 5 strength, dolphins that called those coastal waters home have been dying from a painful skin disease 
Scientists have devoted years to studying the deceased mammals blanketed with crusty, pus-filled lesions in the hope of finding the cause of the condition. Now, 15 years later, researchers at the Marine Mammal Center in California, the world's largest marine mammal hospital, together with colleagues in Australia, have discovered what is causing this devastating disease in coastal dolphins worldwide. Climate change, which is another way of saying humans. <clears throat> Storms like Hurricane Katrina are becoming more frequent and severe as global temperatures rise. These storms pour huge volumes of rain over saltwater oceans, slowly turning them into freshwater reservoirs. Because of the decreased salinity, Dolphins develop patchy, raised lesions over their bodies that sometimes cover more than 70% of their skin, according to a new study published December 15th in the journal Scientific Reports. The condition called ulcerative dermatitis, or freshwater skin disease, sucks dolphins dry of their vital nutrients, paving the way for organ failure and rapid death. Although climate change cannot be fixed overnight, this groundbreaking discovery can provide scientists with information they need to diagnose and treat affected dolphins. This is Dr. Padre Dunham, chief pathologist at the Marine Mammal Center. Quote, with a record hurricane season in the Gulf of Mexico this year and more intense storm systems worldwide due to climate change, we can absolutely expect to see more of these devastating outbreaks killing dolphins. The findings in this paper will allow better mitigation of the factors that led to disease outbreaks for coastal dolphin communities that are already under threat from habitat loss and degradation, close quote. The deadly skin disease was first discovered in about 40 bottlenose dolphins in the New Orleans area following Hurricane Katrina. The condition looks like circular patches of swollen lesions where fungus, bacteria, or algae sometimes sets up camp, leaving a yellow, green, or orange discoloration on the dolphin skin, and then they give you some of these photos that I'm not going to ruin your day with. I'll try to remember to put the link to this story where you can uh, link to the full study and, and take a look at, at what we're talking about here. Uh, I, I, I mean, you know, guys, it's time for humans to go. <clears throat> Since then, meaning since 2005, outbreaks of the disease have occurred in waters off of Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Texas, and Australia, where the rare and threatened Barunin dolphin lives. This is Nahid Stevens, a veterinary pathologist from Murdoch University in Australia. Quote, <clears throat> the breaks in the skin cause the dolphins to lose vital ions and proteins from their bodies. So when all of that is oozing out of them, the fresh water then rushes in, which causes swellings and ulcers. It kills them because it causes electrolyte disruptions in the dolphin's bloodstream, and they ultimately end up with organ failure, close quote. 
Stephen said the lesions are on par with third degree burns in humans. All of the regions where dolphins have been affected have one trend in common. Drastic drops in ocean salinity thanks to more frequent and severe storms brought on by global warming. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season produced a record-breaking 30 named storms surpassing the 28 from 2005. Twelve of them made landfall in the continental U.S. <clears throat> the change in salinity in oceans can last for months, the researcher said, especially after stronger storms, which are predicted to occur more frequently as temperatures warm. This also means that we should expect more outbreaks of the deadly skin disease among dolphin populations of which the long-term outlook is, according to the report, poor. The long-term outlook for the world's dolphins is poor. Yeah, there, there's a, there's a, uh, a euphemism. But anyway, right after reading that story, I did, uh, get a little bit of a warm and fuzzy feeling by this story before you're totally depressed. I do want, someone was complaining today that, and that this channel called Collapse Chronicles is too depressing and that I need to offer some good news on a story, uh, on a channel called Collapse Chronicles. So good old AP right here in the mainstream media, hallelujah. U.S. population growth, smallest in at least 120 years. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole story. Uh, the U.S. population grew by the smallest rate in at least 120 years. Uh, from 2019 to 2020, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, if you want to believe a word they say, <clears throat> uh, population growth in the U.S. was already stagnant over the past several years due to immigration restrictions and a dip in fertility, but, of course, the C word the C word uh, helped bring the total uh, rise in population, depending on uh, where you want to draw your dots. Uh, let's see, so what are the numbers? Um, Okay, the U.S. population still grew this year, uh, although, of course, this year, I, I mean, this, this, this is an estimate. The U.S. pop, okay, this is from July to July. The U.S. population grew by 0.35% from July 29 to 2020, which is still an increase of 1.1 million people in a nation whose estimated population in July was more than 329 million. Uh, an analysis uh, shows that this is the smallest increase this century and smaller than any in the last century as well. The Northeast and Midwest regions of the U.S. actually had tiny population declines, while the South and West uh, increased. Uh, so, among the states, Idaho had the largest single-year population. 
uh, followed by Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and Texas. 16 states lost population, including California, the nation's most populous state, which declined 0.18% to 39.3 million residents, the, the, a whole lot of them heading to Austin, Texas. Uh, Austin, Texas, uh, the, the, the Bay Area to Austin movement of these, you know, these young techies uh, making Austin, Texas uh, one of the biggest boom towns in, a, in, in the United States as these young mo millennials or whatever they are, you know, pouring in to Austin, Texas while I am a climate refugee getting the hell out of Austin, Texas at least and moving at least in the summer to New York to upstate New York, and, and you would think at some point, I keep saying, we're going to see this trend turn around, and at some point, you're going to see more people start to migrate from the south to the northeast. But uh, apparently, the message has not gotten through if you are not a dolphin, uh, because New York had the nation's biggest decline of any state losing an estimated 126,000 uh, residents or a dip of 0.65%. The Empire State has been losing residents since 2016, but the drop this past year was significantly larger than in years past, which is one more reason to move to New York. There are 126,000 fewer people in the state of New York than there were a year ago. So I don't know how many of them uh, died of the C word, uh, but it sounds like about 100,000 people moved out of New York. Uh, probably heading to Texas and Arizona and Florida. So uh, I guess I am considered, yeah, the census uh, came and visited me, so I am now technically a resident of New York. Uh, but of course, New York loses a population of one. Uh, each fall, and there are more New York license plates around here than there are Florida ones. But anyway, I gotta wrap this up, take the little dog on a walk, and then we're gonna get in the kayak and paddle out into this gorgeous river before the big blow blows in. It's going, the, the temperature is gonna drop 43 degrees in a few hours tomorrow, they're saying, as we are heading to a hard freeze here in Central Florida on Christmas night. Get out there and enjoy your probably white Christmas while you still can. Bye, guys.